Welcome everyone. Today is August 9th, 2021, and we are recording a show for August 11th. I'm Trey Dobson, Chief Medical Officer at Southwestern Vermont Medical Center and an emergency medicine physician with Dartmouth Hitchcock Health. And this is Medical Matters Weekly. It's a show about the aspects of healthcare that matter to you most. And my guest today is, is Art Gru, the Executive Director of the Bennington Rescue Squad. We're so happy to have you, Art. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. And a little bit about Art, and then we'll get into his uh, background. He is a New Hampshire native. Where in, in New Hampshire did you grow up? Uh, Hookset. So most people know it by the toll booth on 93. So. Okay. <laughs> great. Um, he's a paramedic, and he earned his bachelor's degree in emergency medical management from Springfield College in Massachusetts, and has more than 25 years' experience in managing EMS in several communities and more than 30 years in the field. He joined Bennington Rescue Squad in September 2019, gearing up for the next six months, which then turned into a pandemic. <laughs> and he leads uh, at least 50 staff members. So, uh, Art, I'm so happy to have you here. I'm happy to learn a little bit more about you personally and Bennington Rescue Squad. I think the audience uh, knows almost everyone has been in contact somehow with Bennington Rescue Squad, but really don't understand uh, how it works and, and really how there are 50 staff there so we'll talk about that um, i did read once that uh, you've always wanted to go into ems is that true so i guess from a professional standpoint yes i i started off in college to be a high school history teacher um, and about a semester in decided yeah that's probably not for me so um, after that, I, I made the transition to EMS because I was looking for something different. I'd been taking an EMT course at the time, and uh, it just seemed like a, a great career path, and I never looked back from there. So you can actually, as a major, um, you can major in EMS management? Yeah, so there's a handful of schools in the country that, that offer a bachelor's degree mine's in uh, emergency medical services management. Um, you know, the, the number of schools that offer that has actually gone down a little bit over the past couple of years because uh, most people are getting into it through either the fire science side or um, through strictly the business side. Gotcha. And and then before, um, you've, had a, you've had a long career in EMS. We just talked about that, 25 and 30 years. How did you end up here in Bennington? Well... Uh, I, I love Vermont. So this is kind of, you know, we, we uh, you know, both my, my wife's from the Connecticut area. I, I'm from New Hampshire. Obviously, I, I, we've always had a love for coming to Vermont. Um, and it just happened that I was reaching the end of my career in Connecticut and looking for what were some of the options out there. And, and uh, Forrest Wine, who was the executive director here before me, um, I, I had interactions with him uh, on some of the national committees that we were on, and and it, it, in one of the conversations that came up that he was leaving, and it just happened to be happened to be, I guess, good timing uh, for me at least. Hopefully for the community. <laughs> oh, absolutely! You've been incredibly well received. I'll go ahead and say that um, by you know the emergency department, the emergency medical service uh, people you work with, and then the community as a whole. So. Thank you for everything you do. I'll get that part out of the way, and thank you for everything your staff do. Uh, it's remarkable, and it's so important to the health of our community. And frankly, there are many communities that don't have a, a healthy, uh, robust EMS system. Um, I know that you need more, we need more, and we can talk about that some too, uh, but we are grateful for what you all do in this community. So before we get into that, just to learn a little bit more about you personally, what do you do when you are not in uh, running as a medic or in your office? Um, Outside of work, I should yeah. say. <laughs> so, so, so many things. Um, we just, I, I just me and my wife like to spend time outside. I mean, just, you know, uh, and, and this kind of goes back to that the reason of wanting to come to Vermont, that there's so much to do outside, and it's just great to, you know, get out, whether it's going for a bike ride, going for a hike. Um, now that some of the COVID restrictions have started to come around, we're finally getting to explore the community a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, there, there's so... You know, there's so many things to do outside that we just love to do and, and get out there. That's great. 
So when you think about Bennington in comparison to the other places you've worked, are, are there differences and similarities um, in, as far as from an EMS standpoint? I, um, so obviously the, the similarities, um, you know, is to anywhere in the United States when you look at, you know, um, you know, the delivery of just EMS on the street or, or the, you know, the treating patients, transporting them to the hospital. I mean, that's, that's the same regardless of where you go, but um, there's a lot of uh, differences in, and I shouldn't really say differences, but cutting edge things that Bennington was doing long before I got here. Um, that, that's just, you know, wonderful. You know, I mean, I, I come from a community that is roughly the same size as Bennington, but in a very populated area compared to here. And some of the programs that, that Bennington is doing are, are well ahead of what other services are doing uh, nationwide. You know, I particularly like our, um, our apprenticeship program you know, that we do for workforce development to bring people in off the street to pay for them, not only to pay for their training, but to make them full-time employees from day one um, to try to grow that workforce. Everyone struggles with staff, as I, you know, I'm, and I'm kind of getting a little bit off topic, but that is one of those things that, you know, we, we all talk about it, mm -hmm. but to cut, to see that a town like Bennington was already doing something about that. And, and, you know, I guess that's one of the things that's different when you look at, you know, how Bennington interacts with, um, or how Bennington's EMS system is, is different. Um, but there's also a lot of similarities, you know, work, workforce issues are similarity everywhere. Payer mix issues are, are, a, are an issue everywhere. Um, you know, and, and funding uh, is funding will always be an issue. Um, you know, as long as the healthcare system is set up the way it is. But is uh, for the audience is is, and of course I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you uh, to explain to the audience: Is Bennington Rescue a part of the city uh, government or part of the city municipality, or is it a separate organization? So we're we're a separate 501c3 nonprofit organization. We do receive some funding from tax from the, uh, the the taxes in the town, um, and, we, and we do receive a, a small amount of funding from the towns of Woodford and Shaftesbury, which we service as well. So how do you then uh, function? You, re you re receive some monies from there. There are some charges to insurance companies and other payers. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a fundraising arm? Yeah, so we do a uh, we do a yearly fundraising. Um, actually, watch your mails; that'll all be coming out uh, in September. Great. Um, and we also, uh, you know, we do have some other programs where we, you know, whether it's um, through community events or whatever, where we can, um, you know, we try to raise a little bit of money to to help offset the cost of the operation. How do you? Um, how would you organize in? in your mind and explain to the audience um, the services that EMS uh, provides, the services that Bennington Rescue provide. I mean, you have 50 staff members. Um, I, I don't imagine you just sit there waiting for calls and then just go do calls all day. No, so, um, you know, while we do, you know, a lot, a lot of what we do is that answer to 911 calls. So, you know, a lot of people enter our system by picking up that phone and, and calling 911. So, that, that's and that's what everybody knows us for. Right? That's what everybody knows an ambulance service for around the country. Right? You call nine one one. You need an ambulance. They show up. Absolutely. But a, 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 there's a lot of other stuff that we do on the other side, from you know e, EMT and and, and other uh, pre-hospital education. So during and, and this is one of those transitions of of care that we kind of did during COVID. We used to provide EMT classes in person to people in the Bennington area, and then. Uh, we were selected as the, the state's, um, I, I guess, preferred vendor for EMT programs statewide. So mm -hmm. we were we were bringing in EMT students from around the state for a blended education program where they did most of their class online and then came to Bennington or to one of our affiliates throughout the, the state to do their, their skills. Um, <clears throat> So that's some of what we do. We provide CPR training. We provide uh, fit testing for businesses and others that may need it, particularly with the pandemic, that's become a big need. Um, we do transfer work. So when I say transfers, you know, uh, not every ambulance call starts at someone's home and ends at the hospital. You know, so we take, we may take people to SBMC and they need to go somewhere else either for 
further rehab care or further critical care and we do those transfers out of the hospital along with some of the other services in the area and we do transfers from nursing homes to the hospital hospital to nursing home and 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 the like and then I guess the other thing that I personally didn't think we would see this quickly but we did a tremendous amount of community it's not I wouldn't call it paramedic or community paramedicine exactly but we did a lot of community stuff over the past year we really branched out where we've been doing home vaccination and home COVID tests so we've been running some vaccination clinics for the state we have some coming up for school-age kids in Manchester we're do we've done well over a hundred in-home vaccinations for the elderly who can't get out and we've done hundreds of in-home COVID tests for residents within the Bennington County area and not to mention all of the you know the mass testing sites that we did it particularly when COVID first started so there's a lot more that goes on than just answering the call and you know or having that 911 call come in and us going to your house yeah absolutely it's a true community service from a medical aspect and also a social aspect you know SVMC and Bennington Rescue and the state and a company out of Boston partnered together and continue to do testing through the end of this month at Bennington Rescue Squad to supplement all the COVID testing that's needed we're going to be removing all of the testing for the community up to SVC which is a big gymnasium and then we'll all be working up there and that's that's a great thing for the fall but for the past year we've been doing that you've been doing that it really shows what type of community this is because there's not a one-size-fits-all approach to a pandemic or to health care in general and by working among probably 60 organizations locally whether it's Meals on Wheels or Bennington Rescue or many many of the different I don't want to mention them all because I'll forget some and I'll get emails about that so just all of them there are so many great ones that we work together with I think incredibly efficient you probably noticed that when you came into Bennington yeah absolutely I mean right right off the bat just the interactions that on you know I saw between all the organizations and dealing with you know a couple of difficult situations that you know historically in other parts of the countries where it worked it's been one of those things where well we'll just deal with it you know we'll figure it out that's right yeah never any real long-term plan on how to address these things and right away I saw everybody was sitting down together to try to come up with what's a long-term solution um, and you know I, I think that put um, you know the, the region and also Vermont and we see that throughout Vermont in, in a great state that's why we did so well I think for you know the COVID response is because there's less of that wall between each level of provider and, and each player within the community and there's that real sense of willingness to work together um, which has been you know just phenomenal and, and particularly with a state this size it really makes it function like a large state. Sure, absolutely. So when we talk about Bennington Rescue, you mentioned some of the towns. Just Can you just say that again, what your overall uh, service area is and then how that works with uh, nearby service uh, um, ambulances and, and how you work together uh, to make sure that the community is covered? So we, we cover for, for 911 responses, we cover the town of Bennington, we cover the town of Woodford, and we cover most of Shaftesbury. The, the northern section of Shaftesbury is covered by Arlington Rescue Squad. Um, and then we work as a mutual aid partner to um, Pownal, to Arlington. Um, occasionally we go out to Deerfield Valley out towards Wilmington. And we also work as a mutual aid partner with Hoosick um, in New York, Cambridge, uh, Berlin, Pittstown. Um, we, we've been as far uh, from an emergency basis we've been as far as Brunswick um, so it, it, it's really you know uh, on the mutual aid side of it, it it's the way it works is if one provider so like we didn't let me let me back up a little bit so in this section of Vermont uh, where we are we're in district 12 and that includes that that's the EMS district that pretty much takes from 
you know, Pownall at the Massachusetts border over to about Wilmington and then north um, just past the Manchester area. So we're all part of one EMS district and we all have a, a mutual aid agreement that encompasses all the services where we will all respond to each other um, in the event of a need. So a lot of times, you know, just because we are, um, you know, servicing those three towns, we may end up somewhere else. They may end up in our town. Um, and that, that happens all the time where we'll jump back and forth to help each other out. Uh, it also makes the system flow a little bit better um, than everybody being, you know, necessarily in that one little town that they made service. How are your or how are your medics and your EMTs, all the first responders, how are they holding up uh, over the past 18 months? I mean, you must have seen some incredible sights and been involved with some incredible situations. Um, for, for the most part, they're doing well. Um, you know, one of the things we struggle with is, is um, you know, that workforce number has made it difficult for, for some because uh, we're busy. You know, we've been, uh, particularly as we start to come out of the COVID response, it's, it's been busy. And the amount of times that people take vacation is down, not because we don't allow them to take vacation, but because people aren't taking it because where are they going to go? Right. And... And so that's been a, a, a struggle because we want we want our, our members to take a vacation. We want them to get away. It's not healthy for any of us to be working, you know, 10, 11, 12 months in a row. That's just not not a good situation for anyone, um, particularly with some of the things we see. And we're so we're trying to make sure that people are, are taking that time on um, and, and having that separation from work. <laughs> And the inability to travel has been difficult. I, I think that's probably the biggest stress on the workforce. So when, when we talk about challenges then uh, to the organization, I mean, COVID has really just, you know, taken over everybody, not only healthcare, but almost any business and really uh, changed our focus. But from the big picture, do you have any specific challenges that you are hoping to address over the next few years? Um, yeah, I, I think our, our biggest challenge has been one that we've always had, or, or say we've had for a while, and that is uh, workforce development. And, and uh, you know, we're struggling with a, you know, an aging workforce. And the, the problems that we run into with that are, you know, we can, we can deal with the short term, but, you know, as an industry, EMS shows about a 20 to 25 percent on you know, attrition rate every year. Wow. So yeah, it's a very high turnover on uh, EMS for the most part, uh, for, for people that stay within the healthcare setting is a stepping stone, whether it's to become a nurse, we have members that have gone to medical school. So it, it's a lot of times people are either using it as a stepping stone or they get into it and realize that it is, you know, some days are, are uh, you know, not that stressful. And, and other days are just very stressful. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of unknown and it's unknown from what you're going to see to unknown as to how long your day is going to last. You could be scheduled 12 hours, but still be here 16 hours after you started because you ended up going to Albany or you ended up going to Dartmouth or you ended up, you know, with, with something else um, that, that took you past your time. So uh, that adds to that attrition rate uh, within the, and, and with a declining, um, you know, workforce and aging workforce in, in this area, that that's a struggle, and it's a struggle that we're all seeing. And I think that over the next, you know, over the next five years, we're going to have to look as an industry as to how can we better work together with the limited resources we have. You know, the the days of, you know every every municipality having a service are, are going away um, you know particularly in areas where workforce is is, is an issue um, because we're all trying to grab that small portion of employee um, and, and that you know if we if we can find ways to work together better uh, you know we can hopefully stretch that workforce out a little bit to make it you know beneficial for everybody that's extremely well said, Art, and, um, and of course, completely agree. I and mean, we will all be working together uh, throughout the state uh, to try to meet some of those workforce uh, needs. I, I think 
this week I have a meeting almost every day on the workforce needs in healthcare, and I'm sure you do too. And you were talking about some of the challenges uh, of being a first responder, EMT and a paramedic, um, but it also can be incredibly rewarding for the right person. Um, how do you, uh, what, what would you say to someone who says, I think I'm interested in this, how do I go about doing it? What's so, what, or what are the benefits of being in emergency medical services? Geez, uh, I, I could think of so many, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it, and it's kind of one of those, it, it, you have to, it, you really have to experience it. I, I, I tell people, you know, to decide if it's what you want to do. Just because you saw it on TV, it, it's not what we see on TV. I mean, as, as I'm sure when you've seen every medical show and you've been like, well, that's not what I normally do every day, right? So, right, right. right. Um, but we tell people, if you're not sure, you can come in, you can do a ride along, you can spend a couple shifts with us. Uh, see if see if what you see on a regular basis, uh, on those days you're here, is what you want to experience on a regular basis. Um, and we have some people that come in and they're, they're here for six hours and right away they're like, absolutely, I want to do this. And we have other people that you know come in for a couple of days and then say, yeah, I'm glad I came. I want to go work at the bank. And, you know, that's that's fine. I, I mean, that you know, we want people that really want to do it. Um, and, 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 you know, it's not for everybody. So, um, so that, you know, that's what we tell, that's what I usually tell people who, who want to do it. And there are some people that will say it's not, um, you know, it's not a career, it's a job. But to that, I always argue that I've been doing this for 30 years. I, I, I don't want to do anything else. I, I love what I do. Um, so, it can be a career if you right. want it to be. So. I think that there's also a pretty good, you know, number or percentage of the population that that believes that EMS is volunteer just because of their exposure and not realizing that it, it can certainly be a career. It can be a job. It can be a stepping stone while uh, someone is learning more about healthcare and figuring out exactly where their place uh, in the world is going to be. But it also can be a career, and so I'm so glad you. You brought that up, and I think for if people are looking for more information other than their standard Google, they can reach out to Art and to his staff, uh, who would be happy to sit down and speak with them, or like Art said, have them even come in and shadow to see uh, what a typical day involves. Um, and it is good that it is not like TV because those TV things are not sustainable uh, and not healthy for people. Um, what, what can we? What can you tell the audience in regards to? I know people get really concerned, I hear this in emergency medicine all the time, they don't want to call EMS because they think they shouldn't, and then other times uh, they do call and they thought they shouldn't have called. What, what kind of advice can you give to folks? Um, so I, that, that's a, geez, I'm trying to think of the proper way to word that because that's a tough question. You know, it is, and, a tough, it's all variable depending on the situation. It, it, it is, and you know, I, I, we we struggle with we struggle with this question, and and we struggle with this question because, um, you know, un, unfortunately, most of what we do is driven by, or not, I shouldn't say what we do is driven, but but how we get paid is driven by what the nature of that call was. So I think if we look at you know what's what constitutes a medical emergency. So um, and. We always tell people that, you know, if you feel that you need us, then you need us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what we don't want is people taking a chance to drive themselves to the hospital because, well, they weren't sure. You know, we see this. I mean, you've seen this. You know, people come in with, you know, the, the, the gentleman having chest pain because, you know what, he wasn't sure. I thought it was just indigestion, and it turns out they get there, and, it, and it's serious or they don't make it on that trip from their home to the hospital right and and that's what we we don't want to see um you know so I, I would say if you have a question you know if you really think that you need us that you know then then call right um you know when we get there we'll, we'll do that evaluation and we may uh you know a lot of times we'll contact the hospital to say hey here's what we have do you, you know they're not sure if they want to go to the hospital we'll make that determination through that phone call. Or, um, you know, we may provide them with some information and say, okay, we can take you if you want, or you can follow up with your physician in the morning. Um, you know, and, and so 
you're much better off to make that call if you're not sure. Absolutely. And, and I, I really am glad you, you say that because I know people get apprehensive. Um, to give the audience a little understanding, it is a myth that emergency departments and EMS services um, are inappropriately used to a large degree. Of course, there are calls to EMS and there are presentations to the emergency department that didn't really need that level of care, but it's actually much smaller than, than one might imagine and it's much better to uh, err on the side of caution. Now that being said, if there are people who for certain reasons uh, need some discussion on how to better utilize services, that's what uh, that's what we are here for, it's what Bennington Rescue is here for, and others, and we're happy to help provide that type of education, but never feel apprehensive about calling if you feel that this could be a medical emergency. It's not your job to determine that, it's the paramedic's job to determine that, and it's the EMS, the EMT's job to determine that, and the, and the hospital's uh, job to determine that. So as we kind of finish up uh, on the 911, just real quick, I was listening to this um, podcast the other day, and it was talking about the history of 911, and I find it fascinating. Unfortunately, I just thought of this, and I won't be able to um, repeat it much. I believe it was in the 50s. Does that sound right? Yeah, I'm trying to remember the first community um, that started with 911. Now, Ugh, well, and when I, I, I I heard that it was, um, they went to Congress, they were trying to think of the different numbers, they decided that 111 um, would be too easily dialed on mistake, and that 911 was good, and of course at the time they were talking about rotary phones, yeah. so there was even a little debate that the 9 was too far of a maneuver to make that happen. Um, there was a case in New York with a gunshot where lots of people watched but didn't really know what to do or who to call. So the 911 uh, system was implemented, and then the first call was somewhere down in Alabama, and that is as much as I can read about it, as I can remember, uh, you guys can read about it. Tell us, uh, as we end here, tell us, I know you've had so many touching and, and positive experiences. Can you share an uplifting story that you've been a part of or that your team's been a part of? Jeez. Um, I guess just so, so many, but I, I think one of the most, uh, you know, and, and not as much a specific story, as much as just the reception that we've received in, in, in doing the, the, the COVID outreaches to people's homes has mm -hmm. just been, you know, um, and, and we know it's been such a trying time for everybody. And to be able to go into someone's house and have a conversation with them even, um, and, and the look on their face and the reception that we receive from these people, we go in, you know, and in some cases, they haven't really seen anybody in months, you know, because no one's come in. And, um, you know, even though we're standing there in a, in a gown and a mask and, you know, eye protection, you know, we, we, we look like a, a bad episode of contagion or something. But <laughs> it, it, it's just the way that, that we've been received um, has just, you know, I, I of, of all the things I've done, it, it's kind of one of those things it, it never... I don't, it never gets old to kind of, you know, just be able to, you know, to provide someone with a little bit of joy to be able to see someone. I never thought we'd be at that point. So. Absolutely. I mean, the, you know, the all the mass vaccination sites were so important to get people through. But then what about the people at home that couldn't get there? And, and you stepped in, your team stepped in. Uh, the community is very thankful. There'll be more of this because there'll be more vaccination yeah. coming up and we'll all be ready to go working together. Um, thank you for joining us today. Our, our guest is Art Groove from the Bennington Rescue Squad. Um, I also just wanna say thanks to all of your staff, um, the medics, the EMTs, the people in the office that help keep the lights on, that keep the system going, uh, the hospital, the community, all of the providers in the community. Uh, we're very fortunate we never take you for granted, and so thank you. Thank you very much. And, and also Dr. Dan Perigo, who's done a lot of work as the district medical director. And I'm going to thank uh, CAT TV for getting this show together every week, Ray Smith from Southwestern Vermont Healthcare, and Ashley Jowett from Southwestern Vermont Healthcare. Next week, we will have Patricia Johnson and Caitlin Tilly, both nurses from SVMC, 
talk about their efforts to help equalize access to the covid nineteen vaccine for the bipoc community members you can send your questions to wellness at svhealthcare dot org i'm trey dobson uh, please go out and take joy and find joy in everything you do even in the face of adversity and we will see you next week